Hi everyone, welcome to Nani's story time. I know you're all kind of stuck in your house and I wish I could sit there on your couch next to you and read you a book. But since I can't, I'm gonna to try to read you some books and send you the videos. And first I wanna say hi to all of you. Let's see if I can do this. Hi Bradshaw, hi Huey, hi Auden, hi Cohen, hi Bonnie, hi Colt, hi Riley, hi Becca, hi Naomi, hi Sydney, hi Guy and Pacey, hi Trevor. I don't know if the ones that are younger than that can know, but maybe, maybe they can. So, hi Junior, hi Corinne, hi Joey, hi Phoebe. Anyway, I love you all. And I want to read you some of the books that your mom and dad loved when they were little. The first one is this one. It's called Isun Boshi. And it's a story like some stories you may have heard before in the past. And at the end, I'm going to ask you what story this, you, this reminds you of. So it's Isun Boshi. This is a Japanese folk tale. So here we go. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this yet, showing you the pictures and reading. So I'll try it this way and see if it works. In the province of Setsu, in a village that is now Osaka, there once lived a couple who dreamed of a child of their own. Year after year, they climbed to the temple to ask the gods for a son. The wife, Yaye, wanted a child so badly that one day she cried out, I would be happy, O oh gods, for a boy child, even if he were no bigger than my thumb. So you can see how they're climbing up the tall, tall path to the temple that's up on a hill. O oh, Kaje Day, by the grace of gods, within that same month, Yaye became pregnant. Together, she and her husband returned to the temple to give thanks for the child that was to come. See, she's a little bit old, but she's still going to have a baby. I guess that's kind of like the story of Abraham and Sarah in the Bible. The day of the birth was joy and astonishment. Yeah, yeah. The gods listened well to you, woman. He is no bigger than your thumb indeed. Isun Boshi, one inch boy. That is the name I give our son. He looks pretty happy. And they're hiding with their thumb the fact that babies are born bare and naked, aren't they? With loving patience, they waited for the boy to grow bigger. He did not. One grain of rice, a drop of tea, the tiniest fish was a feast for Isun Boshi. Look at how he's eating at a little tiny table, little tiny bits of food. Children came from all over the village to see him. They loved to play hide and seek, and Isun Boshi, always smiling and happy, always won. He could hide anywhere. The children learned quickly to take care not to step on the little fellow. Everybody loved him. Where is he hiding? Under a mushroom. Can you imagine that? He's no bigger than that cricket grasshopper. Oto-sama, said Isumboshi, pointing up the river towards Kyoto, the city of the emperor. I will soon be 16. It is time for me to go out into the world. Give me permission to leave, father. I would like to serve in the house of a great lord. His father nodded. Our house will be lonely without you, my son. But it is true. You are 16. It is time to find your place as a man. Come, Yaye, we must prepare our son for his journey. There was much to do. Food, weapons, 
clothing and a boat were needed. A sewing needle became a sharp sword, Hari no Ken. A soup bowl, Owan, made a splendid boat, and Hashi, a chopstick, was the oar. His mother made a dumpling bag, Mochi no Fukuro, and filled it with food. She knew her son would be hungry on the journey. There he is getting ready. They're packing all of his things away. Do you see the, all the, the chopstick and the bowl and everything he has ready for him? Make your fortune in the world with honor to the emperor and to us, said the old man as he launched his son into the stream. Remember, your grandfather was once a vice minister. Yaye wiped away a mother's tears. Genki day, be careful, she called. Sayonara. There he is, they're putting him down in his little tiny boat in that rough water. And see the mother sad. All mommies get sad when their kids go away. Keeping the sh to the shallows where the current eddied, Isunboshi began the long and difficult river journey. The smallest waves threatened to upset the Owan no Fune. He learned to skull with the Hashi, working it in a churning motion to propel the boat around. Uh-oh, does he see what's behind him, do you think? Sudden rain shower filled him with panic. The rain will fill my boat and I'll drown. He sculled with all his might to get in the shelter of a lily pad. He's having to work so hard. I'm glad he's strong. The shower passed. Isun Boshi was just casting off when a giant frog in search of insects landed beside him with a great splash. The frog fixed his two great yellow eyes on the tiny warrior and prepared to swallow him. Quick as a flash, Isun Boshi parried the darting tongue. The surprised frog stopped for a moment, then renewed his attack. The boy fought with all his strength, but he was no match for the giant frog. The deadly tongue lashed out again and Isun Boshi felt himself being lifted into the air. He was certain that he would soon be inside the frog's gaping mouth. Ooh, that frog was probably not very big, but to Isun Boshi, he's giant. But not so. Fate is strange. The tiny warrior was snatched from the jaws of death by a hungry dragonfly. Tonbo, Isimboshi shouted in fear. Without hesitation, he pulled out his sword and thrust it deep into the dragonfly's body. Hari no Ken had found his mark. The lifeless insect and the brave warrior fell into the water. Isun Boshi swam to his boat, climbed aboard, and sculled away. See how he is just thrusting his little needle into the dragonfly's body. Wow, he was brave. Weary, sore, and hungry after many days, Isun Boshi sighted the temple and castle walls of the city of Kyoto. No one noticed the tiny Owan no Fune, that's the boat, on the busy surface of the river. Isun Boshi found a landing place between two rocks. With Hari no Ken sheathed at his side, he clambered ashore. Look how he's climbing that rope. When you guys get bigger, you'll be able to climb ropes in PE. It's so much fun when you can do it. Such traffic. Isun Boshi dodged for his life. How to find the house of a great lord in all this confusion? I must, Isun Boshi resolved. I will pledge my sword for a great lord's defense and honor. Then I can prove I'm a man and a brave fighter. Ah. 
I will try this one, thought Ishsunboshi as he finally stood before the gate of the biggest house in the city. He dusted his clothing, wiped the dirt from his face, and stood proudly his full inch. Late evening shadows were gathering as his tiny bell-like voice called out, Your Lordship, I am Isun Boshi. I have come to offer my services. Open your gate. Look, there he is down there at the gate. Can you see him? Do you think anybody will hear him? Now, it so happened that the Lord of the house was the emperor's prime minister, a very sensitive man. Evening would find him in the garden listening to the insect symphony, cicadas singing at sunset, bees humming drowsily off for the night. This was the music that soothed him at the end of the day. What strange sound is that, he wondered when he heard Isun Boshin calling. He spoke to his attendant. Open the gate carefully. I must see what that is. Can you imagine just sitting in the garden and listening to noises and having it be so quiet that you can hear bees humming and cicadas? Maybe sometime when it's quiet, you should go outside and listen to hear what you can hear if you're very quiet. I am Isun Boshi, cried the young warrior. I have come to serve you. I am the grandson of Horikawa. Ah, so, smiled the prime minister. That is a famous name, Horikawa-sama, and that is a fine sword you have, Isun Boshi. I like the sound of you. I accept you into my service. Miyuki, the prime minister called for his daughter. Here is your new bodyguard. There he is in his hand. He's bowing to show that he is respectful. And so it was that Isun Boshi became a court favorite. His friendly manner, his warm smile, and his fierce defense of Miyuki won everyone's love and respect. He accompanied her everywhere. The princess performed, preferred Isun Boshi above all others. Affection grew between them as the seasons yielded, spring to summer, summer to the enchantment of the harvest moon. For Isun Boshi, it was also a difficult time. He was first a warrior pledged to protect her, yet his heart ached with love for the beautiful Miyuki. How could he speak of love when he was hardly bigger than her thumb? Do you see where he is? Where is, where is Isun Boshi? Can you see him? I will show you. He is keeping her company by standing on her shoulder. Isn't that interesting? Isun Boshi, Miyuki's young voice cried out one morning. We must get ready. Today we must go to the shrine at Issei. For the first time, the tiny warrior did not want to go along. He knew that this was the journey every young maiden must take. At the shrine, Miyuki would pray for a husband, a full-sized man. Hiding his tears, Isun Boshi led the princess safely on the long journey to Issei. Do you see where Isun Boshi is leading her? Where is he? He's at the very front of the cart riding on the horse. And she's inside. Oh, this next part is pretty exciting, but I'm not gonna show you the picture yet. But as Miyuki left the temple, two evil Onai attacked without warning. Only Isun Boshi whirled to face the, the monsters. The other attendants fled in terror. 
Who are you? laughed the Onai. A needle for a sword? Ha! I'll crush you with my little finger. See how one of them is taking that magic mallet and hitting someone on the head. And the other one is going to grab Miyuki. But Isunboshi is on her shoulder with his little sword trying to defend her. And all the rest are running away. They are cowards. They're supposed to protect her, but they're so frightened they're running away. Isunboshi seized his chance. Ai! he shouted. His sharp sword plunged deep into the monster's eye. Blinded and bellowing with pain, the monster dropped Isunboshi and ran away. Uh-oh, but there's still another monster. Oh no, look at those claws, look at those teeth. What's Isunboshi gonna do? The second Onai snatched Isunboshi up in his hairy fist. I will swallow you, you impudent fool. He opened his great jaws and popped Isunboshi inside. Miyuki screamed in terror. Oh, no. Inside the monster's mouth, the tiny warrior dodged the great teeth. Bracing himself, he buried Hari Noken deep in the monster's throat. The Onai coughed with a painful roar. Isunboshi was hurled out of the monster's mouth and landed in the soft black hair of his beloved Miyuki. Well, I think he's gonna have a sore throat tomorrow, don't you? Miyuki was overjoyed. Tenderly, she held Isunboshi. I thought I would never see you again. I was so afraid and you were so brave. Isunboshi swelled with pride. He had proved his courage as a warrior. Look, Isunboshi, the monsters dropped their magic mallet. If we strike it, said Miyuki eagerly, we can have any wish our hearts desire. Make a wish, my brave warrior. For Isunboshi, there was only one wish. What do you think it would be? To be a full-sized man. The mallet shimmered with a blinding golden light. When they could see again, the Isunboshi, who was no bigger than his father, father's thumb, had disappeared. In his place stood a handsome young man. The news traveled more quickly to Kyoto than they did. The prime minister came eagerly to greet them. Isunboshi, he exclaimed. Your new size matches your courage. My son, will you do me the great honor of accepting my daughter as your bride? And so it was. Isunboshi and his princess were wed and lived happily ever after. To this day, all over Japan, the story of Isunboshi is famous. The inch boy who had within himself the bravery, the determination, and the love that are the mark of every full-sized man. There they are, going off to live happily ever after. She's on a horse and he has beautiful new clothes that mean that he is the son-in-law of the prime minister. Isn't that a fun story? Here are all the different pictures, all the different Japanese words you get to learn. And remember the question I asked you at the first? Have you ever heard a story like this? Maybe not from Japan, but from another country. Have you ever heard of Thumbelina or Tom Thumb? Isn't that interesting that they have different stories that are so alike? 
I hope you enjoy it. I'll read you another story and send it to you soon. I love you all.